first edition of Currently in Quincy for 2024, and Happy New Year. I'm Joe Catalano. Today, for our first program of the new year, we welcome Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch, joining us shortly for an update and a preview of the year ahead. First, though, as always, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, it's nice out there, sunny, it's chilly, it's 30 degrees right now. It'll be a bright, brisk day today. Highs only into the mid-30s. Bit of a wind chill this afternoon as well. Clouds increase this evening. Lows drop off into the mid-20s, and that sets the stage for an unsettled weekend. I think the snow will hold off until tomorrow night. Most of the day tomorrow, just cloudy with highs in the upper 30s. Snow arrives probably around 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow night and continues into the day on Sunday with uh, some wind as well. Right now, we are in the three to six inch accumulation category of some heavy wet snow here on the South Shore. Temperature Sunday into the upper 30s. It's a quick mover though. It moves out of here late Sunday night, clears the way for a nice looking Monday with lots of sunshine and highs Monday into the mid 30s. Again, we have sunshine and 30 in Quincy right now. Checking out news for you today, the city of Quincy is now in compliance with a state law that requires communities served by the MBTA to create special zoning districts around T stations that make it easier for the creation of multifamily housing. The city council at their last meeting of 2023 approved of the new district around the Quincy Adams and North Quincy T stations. Quincy's planning director, Jim Fatsies, explains that the new districts don't necessarily mean that new housing will actually be built. That this is a, a guideline uh, coming from the MBTA. This is what they have proposed. Uh, they have asked uh, the cities and towns that are rapid transit um, uh, users like ourselves and those that are also on the commuter rail to uh, meet a set of guidelines which allows for future development around MBTA stations. It's as simple as that. It is not a mandate. Some of what you may have heard is, you know, now they're going to uh, force the city to build X amount of units of housing. That is not true. Um, the ability uh, for someone to build around a T station with a little less stringent rules uh, is available to them, but there will still be site plan review. There will still be other items that allows us to condition these projects as they go forward, and uh, they're common sense based. Ward 4 Councilor James Devine worked with the city to ensure that residential areas around the Quincy Adams T station were not included in the new district in order to protect them from overdevelopment. Failing to comply with the state law would have meant the loss of some state grant money. Also at their last meeting of the year, the City Council did approve a land disposition agreement. It sets the stage for the next phase of the redevelopment of Quincy Center. The agreement sells the IHOP restaurant property that the city acquired by eminent domain to Atlantic Development of Hingham for $7.3 million. Atlantic plans to create a 325 unit apartment complex with some ground level retail space that could include a Trader Joe's market, a restaurant, and a bank. Councilor at large, Noel DeBona, believes the new development will be a boon for the city. Um, this is the next segment in place. Um, you know, I, I looked around the, the, the downtown and looked at all the other parcels especially on the other side. Um, everybody's kind of done their part. The LBC has done their part with Nova Suites. Um, O'Connell Building has done their parts with, uh, with our, you know, Chestnut Place. Um, you know, there's uh, the, the garage is built on that particular side. And then you look on the other side and you see the Galvins have done their part with the Cliveton Place condos and the infrastructure is in place for this. So this is the next piece of the puzzle um, to do this phase and this phase of the Ross lot, the Ross garage lot side. Um, I know that we're going to have 800 so parking spots in that. I think it's a 300 and 500 split between the uh, residential that will be on that side and the grocers, uh, the new grocer um, parking that's going to be done for there. So we're in the next phase and I'm looking forward to moving in the right direction and moving the city forward for our taxes and our tax base. And it's a, I think it's a perfect location. 
Under the agreement, Atlantic will also construct an 800-space parking garage that the city will pay for and own. Atlantic hopes to break ground before this coming spring. Three Quincy City Councilors will be leaving the council this coming Monday. Councilor-at-Large Ann Mahoney relinquished her seat in a losing bid for mayor. Ward 2 Councilor Anthony Andronico narrowly lost a re-election bid. And Ward 5 Councilor Chuck Phelan is retiring. During the last City Council meeting, Quincy State Representative Tacky Chan brought well wishes for all three from the State House. Uh, on behalf of uh, Speaker Mariano, uh, Senator John Keenan, Representative Bruce we just want to extend our congratulations on your uh, successful session, but also on some of your members that are departing. Uh, Councilor Mahoney, Councilor Phelan, Councilor Dronico, uh, we appreciate your good work uh, on your time at the council, and all we want to do is uh, wish you all uh, happy holidays and a uh, great success on your next endeavors. And the, council, uh, the uh, delegation has provided you citations, which the president has, uh, and uh, that's all. So thank you very much for your work and have a happy holiday. Thank you, Rep. Chan. During inauguration ceremonies this coming Monday at 10 a.m. at City Hall, Scott Campbell will take Ann Mahoney's seat. Richard Ash will take Anthony Andronico's seat. Dan Minton will assume Chuck Phelan's seat. Campbell and Minton both ran unopposed. Mayor Thomas Koch will be sworn in for a seventh term in office. Well, a Quincy man's been charged with animal cruelty after police say he set a caged raccoon on fire. 63-year-old Andrew Chu is charged with trapping that raccoon in a Royal Street backyard in Wollaston last Saturday and placing the caged animal over an intensifying fire that he lit in a tin can. Police responded to a call about neighbors arguing, obtained video of the incident, arrested Chu, and took the raccoon to the New England Wildlife Center in Weymouth, where it's said to be in critical condition. Chu was released on personal recognizance after pleading not guilty in Quincy District Court on Tuesday. He's due back in court next month. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with newly reelected Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch. That's next. Welcome back. I thought it very appropriate for the first show here and currently in Quincy for the new year to welcome the chief executive for the city of Quincy, Mayor Thomas P. Koch, and he's agreed to come on over and chat with us. Mayor, great to see you. Happy New Year. It was a long travel <laughs> experience to get over here, Joe. <laughs> no, I was glad to be here. Happy New Year to you as well. How were your holidays? Very nice. Yeah. It was actually um, a little more low-key. I read two books right after Christmas. I received a number of books for Christmas, and uh, uh, it was great getting together with the family, and that's what it's all about, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Absolutely. The weather cooperated nicely as well. Indeed, indeed. That's about the change, I understand. Yeah, before we uh, talk about a lot of different <laughs> things that I have on my list, the matter at hand, I guess, is the first uh, impending snowstorm of the year. and First significant one in a couple of years, really. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's always challenging because uh, when the temperature's around that little above freezing, around freezing, you could have rain on the coast and house neck and you could have four inches of snow in west quincy right. so yep. public works they got a good handle on things and uh snows we plow it <laughs> yeah a lot of communities are having uh, issues finding dry plow drivers how's how's the city fair no, we're in good shape we okay. we got a, first of all we got a good department uh, a lot of good guys that know how to operate equipment i should say guys and ladies right. we got some ladies too uh and we got some great contractors that uh, we rely on and uh, they're excellent, but it, that is becoming a challenge. I often say to people in 10 years, who's going to be driving the plows? Is that right? Uh, it's going to get tricky. Yeah, you can't use like everything else in the economy. So, drive yeah, a snow exactly, right. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, I guess it's a good time to remind folks about uh, the snow parking rules in the city if a snow emergency is declared. So the winter started at an odd year, right? That's correct. Yes. So it's uh, so parking is on the odd side for the whole year. Um, you know, and I know we have a lot of people that maybe newly moved in right. and all, but yep. there's certain streets that are just impassable if people are parking it with snow. So, you know, this is all about public safety. Yeah. It's about the ability to get up and down our streets with ambulances and, and uh, certainly for anyone just to get by, but certainly for experience, um, you know, if someone's having a bad medical event, you want to get there quickly as you can with that ambulance and the help. So 
I ask people to please cooperate and, and uh, to do the appropriate thing. Yep, uh, and a good way to find out if there is no emergency, sign up for the city uh, alerts on the website, right? That's right. Yeah. A lot of people have signed up, and it's very handy. It absolutely yeah. is. We post everything. It's no emergency. Everything is posted. Yep. Uh, here as well. You know the drill. <laughs> yeah, it, we do it here as well to help yes. you out uh, at QATP. So, Mayor, seventh term, uh, inaugural coming up Monday at 10 a.m. in the Great Hall. Uh, open to the public, right? Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Can you give us a little preview of what you might uh, have in store? You, you don't believe me, but I really <laughs> haven't started it yet. Um, I'll, I'm a, I'm a last-minute guy. I used to be that way with term papers. Okay. So I'm better under pressure. Okay. Uh, it'll be a busy weekend. But essentially, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, reinvigorating the Quincy 400. It's, ah, it's, it's a year okay. away. Uh, we'll be talking about some of the specifics, some of the ideas that we have to celebrate, some of the things that we can do to honor the past and some of the people from the past. But it's also really about preparing for the future. Yep. It's about that next generation. So uh, that'll probably be the, the theme of it. I'll okay. talk a little bit about, you know, we're in, we're in good shape financially. We're stable. Uh, I, am, I do see the warning signs coming with the state's uh, revenues are, are not nearly as robust. Um, you know, there's some signs in the economy. We've, we've got to be careful. So I would suggest this year's budget will be very tight, okay. uh, anticipating that we won't see these increases in local aid that we've enjoyed the last couple of years. And I, right? I certainly thank the governor and the state legislature for, for that revenue sharing when times are good. But when times get tight, it's, it's a challenge for yeah. all of us. So uh, we'll, we'll, we've been through this before, and we'll, we'll get through it together. Well, interestingly, when you first took office, right, 2007, 2008, you hit with the Great Recession right yeah, after Yeah, I mean, that. If, yeah. if I knew in 07 what was going to happen in 08, I'm not so sure it would have run. Right, but, uh, yeah. Boy, that was... That was a crazy time. Exactly. And, and, uh, yeah. we, we got through it. I mean, we, we had to do layoffs. We really had to tighten the belt. Uh, but we did get through it. And uh, I think we come on the other end a little bit stronger mm -hmm. and uh, reminding ourselves that uh, how important it is to have your fiscal house in order. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you anticipate cuts uh, next year or I, It's changes? probably too early to say. Okay. I, I don't anticipate cuts. You know, we have, we're in the middle now of contracts with all the unions. So right. there'll be an increase of 3% July 1st for most unions. So. With that in mind, beyond that, I don't see any big changes or okay. increases in any way. Right. Recognize that we're in some challenging times. Any changes in your administration or on boards and commissions? Uh, in the still, still mulling that over. Okay. I mean, if essentially the um, not too many changes on at the administrative level, um, but all of that kind of kicks in first Monday of February. So I have a little time to yep. to mull that over. Uh, probably make a few changes on boards and commissions and some folks that have probably have had enough. Uh, get some other folks to step up. Yes. I mean, these people do this on a volunteer basis. That's right. um, and quite frankly, some of those boards, they, they, they should get badges of merit for, uh, you know, the con con planning boards, EBA, they're probably the harder ones because you get a lot of uh, neighborly disputes involved in those. So uh, these are volunteers that do, do a great job for us. So yep. I'm grateful for all of the members of the boards and commissions. Absolutely. So can we talk about uh, some things that you hope to accomplish uh, in your next four years in office? Sure, sure. Um, certainly, we're, we're, we've got a meeting coming up on the Squantum Elementary School. That's been on the list for some time. That'll be uh, really our fifth new school, in a, in a sense, because of the Christopher Center. It's, it's an older building, but it's been completely rehabbed. Yes. So I'd consider this the fifth new building uh, since we've been in office. It's, it's an old, tired plant uh, that has been challenged. So we have been accepted in the queue uh, with the School Building Authority. So we're moving forward on that. We got a good team in place, good architectural firm, OPM. I think it's the 17th of January. We have a meeting That's in Swanum. Right. And uh, to share the, with the public as a follow up to the orig original meeting, and we are going to incorporate some of their ideas and thoughts oh, into okay. the new building. Uh, but it's residential areas. So we want the building to reflect the residential area, obviously, be state of the art. Mm. And uh, we're trying to meet the, the energy challenges uh, of the day. And I think we're going to be successful. Uh, with a with a zero carbon footprint, wow. so okay. uh, it's a challenge, but we're that's the goal. Um, so you know, look forward to getting that done. Uh, definitely want to get a performing arts center in the ground uh, sometime during our celebration next year. So we're advancing internally some plans on that and how we're going to approach it. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, as you know, Joe, we we talked a lot about that because the public talked a lot about that. That's right. When we did the surveys through the Quincy 400, the greatest common response we got was a place, whether you call it Performing Arts Center, whatever the term may be, yes, yeah. for people to come together and enjoy the arts. 
Uh, so I heard them loud and clear, and we're going to follow through on that. Same location as it was originally proposed, right? Downtown? No, we're looking at two or three different locations oh, okay. within the downtown. What makes the most sense? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, I remember the first proposal was pretty elaborate. It was. Uh, a it was. It was part of a greater project that um, was just didn't pencil out. Right. Uh, it, was, it was a little too aggressive. Okay. Uh, so we're we're reworking it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the public safety complex. I'm sure you're hoping yeah, to see it completed, it, right? It, next week, we'll start to see the steel going up. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Which is exciting. The crane should be in place, and we'll start to see it like an erector set. The steel come together. Wow. And it'll take shape. Um, of course, the whole elevation of the site had to come up because of the floodplain. Right. So the building's going to look bigger than, than, than what it would normally have been on the old elevation, but um, we'll meet all the all the code and that requ required today to make sure that we're out of the floodplain and, and people forget where the town river is right in back there and right, yep. you know you do have uh, some some challenges there but it's going to be a handsome building i have always said when we do these things we should do it right it should be quality spend a few more dollars because it's going to be there 50 to 100 years yes yeah what's the current timeline for that project do you know maybe? my guess is we'll be around september of 25 will be uh will be finished okay yeah. all right so a little later than First hoped, but yeah, I mean the whole the whole project was complicated, and um, the whole Father Bill's move yes. took longer uh, than uh, than we had expected or hoped. Uh, and then of course we ran into asbestos in the ground, which cost us some time. Uh, anytime you're doing earthwork in an urban setting, you just never know what you're going to run into. Right. Yeah. Speaking of asbestos in the ground, that also delayed the new animal shelter it project, did. right? It yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that right now? It's a good question. I got to get the update on okay. that. Uh, so where we're where we're, we're going to be, but. Uh, it did. It was. Uh, I guess I'm not surprised by this stuff anymore. Yeah. But it, it does complicate it. It does cost money. But you can deal with it and resolve it. Sure. In the old days, they just buried everything. It's so true, and we're you know we're finding it now, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I remember when they tried to build a high school up <laughs> by. Uh, yeah, and when I was a park commissioner, all the yeah. park work we did. Anytime you go into renovation, you'd be digging up trash right. and milk bottles and coal, soot, and ashes, and it just that's what they did. Yeah. You know? Um, we talked just a little bit about the uh, schools. You're also chair of the school committee, and you mentioned the Dick Tristafaro Center. Right. We're in the new year now, uh, so it'll be opening up later this year. Yes, so the decision was made, recommended by the superintendent and the school committee, is not to move uh, anyone from Delicaeza during the middle of the year. People felt these kids are comfortable where they are. So what we'll do is uh, we're spending some time individual tours for families uh, right now. Okay. Uh, we're expecting, in addition to the delicates of folks moving over uh, this summer, uh, at least 50 to 60 families that have outplacement now, they can come back to Quincy. So, you know, there's a process there. So mm -hmm. we're going through that process. We'll start a very robust summer program at that location and then full, full bore in September. So the superintendent and his team will be uh, spending some time uh, hiring some new folks uh, with the right background to, to meet with that challenges of, of that population. So uh, I'm excited about it. We've got a lot of good positive comment on it uh, from so many people. So it's, it's, it's one of those very unique projects for a municipality to do, but very, very valuable one. It's interesting. People might not realize it's, it's year-round. It's, it's not on the that's, school schedule, right? It's that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Under the law, we are mandated to provide services year-round up to a certain age, and, okay. uh, and I'm okay with that. We right. should be doing it, and uh, we're going to do it as well as anybody else. I know you had discussed at one point maybe taking students from out of district. So is that still a possibility? If, if there's room, um, we will do that, okay. absolutely. Um, we, we obviously focused on the Quincy family sure. first, yeah. but if there's plenty of room left, then that's something we'll entertain. Okay. And will that free up space at Della Chiesa uh, for something else? Yes, and we're now, uh, we're now having those discussions with the school committee uh, how to best use that facility. Right. It's going to need a little bit of work. It's, uh, it's uh, not an old building, but mm -hmm. um, I would say that what that probably wasn't built as best quality we could have at the time okay. as a certain budget allowed. So a lot of mechanical work that's going to be needed on that before we put people back into it. Okay. Not too long ago, you talked about possibly taking over Wollaston Beach from the state there. You still would like to see that happen? Well, we, we had some discussions about it uh, with then Governor Baker yeah. and the legislature, and, and our legislative delegation wasn't in, uh, in unison on it, so we, we backed off. Uh, I do have a meeting coming up with the new commissioner of the DCR, Brian Arrigo, who was the mayor of Revere. That's I knew right. him up there. He was vice chair of the MBTA advisory oh, board. Okay. So. He reached out to me, uh, we're going to connect and, and see uh, how the DCA could do a better job 
okay. in service in Quincy. Okay. All right. So. And I and I you know say that a little pressure on them respectfully, yeah. uh, but in reality, the, their budget hasn't grown much over the years, yeah. and they've got a lot of territory to cover. Have you discussed it with uh, Governor Healy at all in her administration? I, I haven't discussed specifically taking it over okay. again. I, right. I did indicate in the past what we attempted to do that. We hope that uh, we can ha see a better conditions at not only Wallison Beach, but the DCR has a lot of property under the jurisdiction in Quincy, like the Squanum Point Park, sure. Brennisburg Parkway. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, we hope we can build a good relationship with them and get some more done for Quincy. Okay. Uh, we cannot, I guess, not talk about um, the Long Island Bridge issue, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some news about that actually late last year right. uh, from the Department of uh, Environmental Protection. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Where does that stand right now? Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the judge there, the adjudicator on this case, uh, made three rulings there. Uh, one was that the, the bridge abutments, the piers, are in play now. They were formerly not in play environmentally. Okay. That it's a repair and maintenance project, um, which is huge. Oh. It's not just a, a change of thing. It's, it's, it's much bigger than that, okay. which we've been arguing from day one. Uh, which, which, you know, all these things are, are very important in the discussions and the dialogue and the laws. The biggie is that Boston has not been able to produce the documents that they had a Chapter 91 license to build the bridge originally. That could be a real game changer. Okay. I mean, the Chapter 91 having it in place, grandfathered in, is so much easier than applying for a new Chapter 91. So, I, you know, they're all, you know, administrative rulings. Yes. Uh, it slows it down. Okay. It's, uh, I think it's good for Quincy uh, in our battle uh, to keep that bridge from being built. So, um, you know, it's been a number of years now that, uh, that this was first announced. It was Marty Walsh. Uh, and uh, so it's got to be, I, think. I was, I was going to say, it's got to yeah. be six or seven years. Yeah. Um, who'd have thought, you know. And, you know, I'm still hopeful that the uh, Boston administration would look at some alternatives, including water transportation. It's just, you know, every day, back and forth, there's a ferry boat that goes by from Bingham and I'll go to Boston every day. Uh, it goes right by it. They ferry kids out there all summer long for the programs out there. So yeah. I, I don't know why we can't do that. Would it come, you anticipate it coming from Boston right to Long Island or would there be a Quincy connection? Or how would that? I, it, I mean, that remains to be seen, okay. but uh, certainly uh, I'm hopeful that the new administration, the Haley Driscoll administration, uh, and I know they are looking at a more robust water transportation system for the whole Boston mm -hmm. Harbor. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor was the mayor of Salem. They did an incredible job. She did an incredible job for the city of Salem in, in water transportation. And I think if we do a better job coordinating that for the whole harbor, we get a lot of cities that, that sit right on the waterfront. It, it just makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Squanta Point Park. There's state property right there. And there's Absolutely. a pier already there, too. Absolutely. So yeah. how did the uh, trial service with the Winthrop Ferry go um, for the past? I think it went fine. Yeah. I, you know, at the end of the day, people want a more regular, more options for times. Yeah. So it. It's helpful, but it's not the real deal, so I don't think it's you know, accepted as the real deal because, you know, people's schedules are, are uh, it can't be that convenient and, that, you know, we can only this one day, this certain time. Right. You need more options for people. You really do. You mentioned the MBTA, Mayor. Uh, we can't not talk about that either. Uh, have you had any meetings with the new general manager? Indeed. Okay. Um, and, of course, being on the board, we have a lot of meetings. There's a lot of dis discussions about a lot of issues on a regular basis. And um, I think we are turning the corner. I really do. Now we're seeing those slow zones being eradicated. Yes. Um, I think there's some great progress. I mean, you talk about, um, you know, bad luck. I mean, everything just came, was hitting at once. Just when you think you're making progress here, something else happened over here, like that old game of whack-a-mole. But, you know, it, it, I've said it and I'll say it again, um, you know, decades of neglect in the system, you got to invest in it. Uh, just like we talk about locally on infrastructure, whether it's water mains or fixing our schools and buildings, you have to invest in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with decades of neglect on that infrastructure investment. So I think we turn on the corner. I think this general manager gets it. He's got a great back background in railroad and uh, made some nice moves and changes. And he's going to hold people accountable. We well, have a couple of minutes left, but um, I want to ask you, have you made any, or do you make any New Year's resolutions, either personally or professionally? Um, you know, I, you know, I, I uh, always like to say I got to get in a little bit of shape, maybe drop a few pounds like so many do. I don't know if I put six or eight on over the holidays. <laughs> uh, but no, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve the city as mayor. I got a great family. They're all healthy, doing well. 
Uh, and I just uh, I'm grateful. I, I get to work with some incredible people each and every day. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that the projects we talked about and others will be able to move forward and get some of those things done. And, and I'll be a happy guy. I want to wish you an early uh, happy birthday this later this month. Be, uh, advancing. In, we don't celebrate in those years. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no, no big parties planned. <laughs> no big parties. Thank you, though. Uh, but I hope it's a, hope, a happy and, a, and healthy one. And uh, thanks for coming by and chatting with us. My pleasure. Good to see you as always, John. As always, likewise. And just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of what you see is what you get out there. Lots of sunshine, chilly winds with highs in the uh, mid-30s this afternoon and mid-20s this evening. Tomorrow, most of the uh, daylight hours are just cloudy. It's a calm day with the highs in the upper 30s. The snow arrives after dark tomorrow night and continues through the day on Sunday. The uh, latest forecasts for our area, about three to six inches of uh, wet, uh, heavy snow through the day on Sunday, but it's a quick mover. It clears out for Monday with lots of sunshine and again, highs uh, Monday into the mid-30s. Thanks again for Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch joining us for our program today. My pleasure. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. We're off on the program here Monday, by the way. Join us next Friday. Folks from the Quincy Community Action Program stopping by to tell us about the energy assistance programs that are available for you this winter. Hope you can join us for that. In the meantime, head over to our website anytime. It's qatv.org. You'll find all of our latest programs there. There's news and information. There's video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend. Thank you.